9th of February 1940, German Heinkel HE-111 bombers of Kampfgeschwader 26 attack British shipping in the Firth of Forth, on the coast of Scotland, aiming to damage the Rosyth naval base. A British pilot flying a Spitfire of number 602 City of Glasgow Squadron pumps 625 rounds of machine gun fire at one of the Heinkels, damaging its port engine. The German pilot lowers his landing gear to signal he was surrendering and made a crash landing in a field southeast of the town of North Berwick. The Heinkel tipped up onto its nose as it came to a halt. Britain had just been handed an intact German bomber and they were not slow in seeing its potential. The Heinkel was carefully disassembled, put on a truck and sent south to the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough in England for testing and evaluation. At Farnborough, technicians carefully reassembled the Heinkel and repaired it. Spares could be sourced from a number of crashed Heinkel 111s that had been recovered from all over Britain and sent to the facility. They were cannibalised to keep the North Berwick HE 111 in the air. Main flight testing was conducted by the aerodynamic flight of the Experimental Flying Department. As more enemy aircraft types were captured, the unit was formally established at RAF Duxford in November 1941. The roles of the unit were two, to evaluate enemy aircraft and to demonstrate their characteristics to other Allied units, so that pilots would know how to combat these enemy planes. In March 1943, the unit, now called number 1426 Flight, or the Enemy Aircraft Flight, moved to RAF Collie Weston. The unit was quickly christened the Rough Fuffer. The single Heinkel 111 that was operated by the enemy aircraft flight was not allowed to fly more than five miles from RAF Collie Weston without a fighter escort for obvious reasons. However, on the 10th of November 1943, it crashed at Polebrook when landing, ironically attempting to avoid one of the enemy aircraft flight's Junkers 88s that was taking off. The pilot and six RAF ground crew were all killed in the crash, and four more received serious injuries. Afterwards, ground crew always travelled separately because of this accident. As well as bombers, German fighters fell into British hands. In fact, a total of seven captured Messerschmitt Bf 109s passed through the unit during the war. It began with a Bf 109E3 that was captured by the French in November 1939 and given to the RAF a year later. The second 109, held by the enemy aircraft flight, an E-4B, known as Black 12, still exists today in RAF ownership. On the 27th of November 1940, Black 12 was shot down by a Spitfire of number 66 Squadron. Over the Thames estuary, the German pilot barely landed the plane at RAF Manston in Kent. The Royal Aircraft Establishment repaired it. Then Rolls-Royce, in Hucknall, carried out engine performance tests. Next, the plane passed to the controller of research and development at Hatfield for propeller tests, before joining the enemy aircraft flight in March 1942. In 1943, the 109 was put into storage. In 1969, it moved to St. Athen for refurbishment, and in 1976, in German colours, moved to the RAF Museum at Hendon in London, where it remains to the present day. The fourth of the seven Messerschmitt Bf 109s captured by the British and used by the enemy aircraft flight also exists today. Built in Leipzig in September 1942 and sent to North Africa in October, the Bf 109G2 was damaged. The 109 was abandoned at Gambut Main Airfield, southeast of Tobruk. The plane was discovered on the 13th of November 1942 by Australian Flight Lieutenant Ken McRae, an engineering officer, who noted damage to the tail wheel, tail plane, canopy and one propeller blade. The next day, using parts from Wreck 109s that littered the airfield, the G2 was repaired and made airworthy. It was the first Gustav 109 to be captured by the British and tested. Delivered by ship to the UK in December 1943, it was further repaired using salvage parts. On the 27th of March 1945, it finally joined the enemy aircraft flight. 
In April 1946, the aircraft was packed for future display use, and between 1946 and 1965, it remained with the Air Historical Branch. In 1967, it was used in a static role in the film The Battle of Britain. Its long restoration to flying condition was completed in March 1991. Unfortunately, on the 12th of October 1997, it crash-landed in a field near Duxford, gear down, flipping over, and buckling the rear fuselage, crushing the fin and rudder, and damaging the propeller. Restored as a static exhibit, it is currently on display at the RAF Museum in London. One example of the Messerschmitt Bf 110 twin-engine fighter was captured by the RAF. Intercepted by British fighters on the 21st of July 1940, it was forced now near the Goodwood Racecourse in Sussex. Repaired, it remained in RAF service until 1945, and was then sadly scrapped two years later. Many people don't realise that the Italians took part in the Battle of Britain. Their rather obsolescent aircraft were easy prey for RAF Spitfires and Hurricanes. A Fiat CR-42 Falco biplane fighter suffered engine failure on the 11th of November 1940 and landed on the beach at Orford Ness in Suffolk. It has been preserved at the RAF Museum in London. Four Focke-Wulf FW-190 fighters fell into British hands intact. This was because the pilots landed by accident at RAF bases. The first, an A3 model, flown by Oberleutnant Armin Waber, shot down an RAF Spitfire over Devon on the 23rd of June 1942. Faber then became lost and landed at RAF Pembry in Wales, where he was taken prisoner. The second FW-190, an A5 U8 model, landed in error at RAF Manston in Kent on the 20th of June 1943. The third, an A4 U8, I've dealt with in one of my previous films, so please see the end screen for a link. And the last FW-190, also an A4 U8, also landed by accident at Manston, and was captured on the 20th of May 1943 and extensively tested. Unfortunately, none of these aircraft survived today. One of the RAF's greatest coups during the war was the defection of a Junkers Ju-88 A1 night fighter in May 1943. I've made a film about the fascinating incident, so look at the end screen for a link. This aircraft survives today at the RAF Museum in London. Another Ju-88 fell into British hands because its pilot defected. The Ju-88 D-1 Trop, serving with the Royal Romanian Air Force, was flown to the British colony of Cyprus on the 22nd of July 1943. Renamed Bakshish, an Arabic word for tipping, it was test-flown by the RAF in Egypt. However, as the British already had three Junkers 88s, it was given to the Americans. It was flown across the Atlantic to Wright Field in Ohio. Today, it is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton. A single Henschel HS-129B1 ground attack aircraft was brought to England after capture in North Africa in 1943. It was scrapped after the war, and no examples of this rare aircraft exist today. Finally, a single Messerschmitt ME-410 Hornet heavy fighter was captured intact after landing at Monte Corvino in Italy after the crew became lost. This aircraft flew in the RAF until 1946. The aircraft was also, rather predictably, scrapped post-war. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.